In this video, I'm going to demonstrate my way of performing vertical chop with the Seibel Vertical Chopper. I first saw vertical chop as a second year resident performed by Wayne Bowman. Seeing the nucleus seemingly fall apart with minimal effort really caught my attention and inspired me to learn it as quickly as possible. While I now prefer horizontal chop for most of my routine cases, vertical chop is great for dense nuclei and small pupils. As with any technique, it's important to practice so you're prepared for the tough cases, so I do use it on a regular basis. The Seibel Vertical Chopper is fairly blunt and great for 2 and 3 plus nuclei. I'll typically use a Chang Vertical Chopper, which is much more sharp for the densest nuclei, but the technique is the same. First, a word on settings. Vacuum is important for vertical chop to stabilize the nucleus. In horizontal chop, you can stabilize the lens using the two instruments, but in vertical chop, it's important to counterbalance the depression of the chopper by holding the lens in place with the phago tip. As usual, I clear out the epinucleus and drill a little pothole on sculpt. Then I switch to my chop settings, which has traditional phaco in burst mode and high vacuum. This is used to burrow a little deeper if necessary for good purchase. I then use continuous ozzle to emulsify the quadrants in the quadrant setting. If you haven't watched my horizontal chop video, I recommend watching that first as the same principles apply in terms of preparing the lens to make everything simple. To review, I do this step by step, the only difference being that with a vertical chop case I will add vacuum and really get good purchase on the lens before beginning the initial chop, whereas the horizontal chopper is placed before adding vacuum. Here I'll show five cases of vertical chopping followed by two cases showing how to proceed if the first chop fails. In this first case, you'll see that I will initially clear out the anterior epinucleus so that we can see the nucleus, which is the part that we want to chop, and then immediately I will then use sculpt mode to burrow a little tunnel, and you'll see some lens milk showing the lens is about 2 plus NSC, and then the lens is now prepared. I then ask the assistant for the chopper, and then we'll place the chopper into the eye, add vacuum without moving the phaco tip, depress the chopper next to the phaco tip, and then pull the pieces apart. Next, I will immediately push the chopper right into the hemi-nucleus and then split the two pieces in, in half. You do not need any vacuum for this part. You literally can spear the hemi-nucleus with the chopper tip and then use the two instruments to pry the pieces apart. You'll see a little bit of nuclear material is kicked up into the chamber and when this happens and your view is obscured, you can just aspirate it and clear that out. You'll keep going around, performing the same steps until the nucleus is between between four to eight pieces, depending on how dense it is. And then once you finally have enough pieces that are small enough, you can see that you can then start pulling the pieces out. It's best to do all the chopping in situ before removing any of the pieces to stabilize the lens. Whereas in horizontal chopping, you can stabilize the lens more with the two instruments. Vertical chopping is a little more difficult. So Here's the second case, and you can see that again, we'll prepare the case by removing all of the anterior epinucleus, and then burrow our little tunnel in on sculpt, so you're deep into the lens, often down to the sleeve, and this ensures you don't have to worry about this step once you have the chopper to deal with. So again, we'll get the vertical chopper, not the horizontal chopper as seen there, put the phaco tip into the hole, go into vacuum, and then slowly, gently depress the chopper next to the phaco tip, and then use the two instruments to pull the nucleus in half. It's a little bit of a softer nucleus and a little more difficult to vertical chop. But again, we'll just kind of spear the hemi nucleus with the chopper and then use the two instruments to pull things apart. On a softer case like this, you probably only need to chop the lens into about four pieces to make things easy, sometimes maybe into a fifth piece to make it really easy to remove the first piece. Here we have the remaining hemi nucleus. So again, we'll just kind of slice the nucleus using the chopper and then pull the two pieces apart. There's no vacuum for these subsequent chops, which makes it extremely safe. There's no worry about surge or going through the posterior capsule. Now we have five pieces and so we can go ahead and pull up the first piece and you can see how easily the first piece is removed and then the ozzle system emulsifies it very quickly making this a very efficient procedure. Here's one more softer case and again we're preparing the nucleus by clearing everything out and making our little tunnel. Once we have our tunnel we'll add the chopper into the eye and then we'll place the phaco tip back into that previously created tunnel go on to the vacuum, and again to slowly push the chopper into this nucleus. Once it's deep, you can then go ahead and separate the pieces and you can see how nicely and quickly that separates. Again, then we'll spear the nucleus that remains and just keep going around and separating the two pieces as you spear it. You can see how well this works. Here we'll show two cases of more dense nuclei. This is a three plus nucleus. And so here preparing the lens, we're going to tunnel in as deep as possible down to the sleeve to make sure we're in deep in the lens and this will make it much more easy to crack the lens down to the posterior plate. Often these 
lenses that are more dense are more difficult to chop. So again, we'll add vacuum, high vacuum. You'll see that the lens is able to be moved at the FACO tip. It'll kind of tug towards the FACO tip, showing you have good purchase. And again, then you'll just use the chopper to push down into the lens substance, get it in deep, and then you can separate the two pieces. And again, in these cases, unlike the previous ones, we're going to get good vacuum on each of the subsequent pieces to make sure that we have good purchase to manipulate the lens. And you'll see we'll go around uh, about 60 degrees at a time making a piece. So we'll get good purchase here. You'll see the lens move as we get good purchase. Once you have the purchase, you just push the chopper down next to the FACO tip and chop and then split the two pieces. We'll keep going around doing this repeatedly until we have about six pieces. And then once you have all of the pieces made, you can go ahead and start removing them, often by switching to a blunt instrument to protect the posterior capsule. Here's our fifth and final case showing the complete chopping. Again, this is a fairly dense lens. We'll get deep before we start to chop. And here you'll actually see we'll use the chopper with a little bit of a horizontal motion with some slicing effect. So we will push the chopper in out a little bit farther away from the FACO tip near the edge of the capsule and then do a slicing horizontal, almost like a diagonal chopping motion. So it has a little bit of the characteristics of vertical chop and a little bit of the horizontal chop, kind of giving you the advantages of both techniques to really get these dense lenses to crack. You can see that the lens, we're going to get good purchase on it with 400 or 450 millimeters of vacuum. Here in this case, we're going to pull out the first piece. And you can see this is a little bit more burnescent, about a 3 plus nuclear sclerotic cataract. Although in general, I do like to do all of the chopping in situ as this stabilizes the bag and makes the pieces more easy to manipulate. With horizontal chopping, you don't need to stabilize the nucleus as much with the vacuum because you can stabilize the nucleus between the two instruments by trapping it. Here again, you'll see we'll get good purchase. Once you have good purchase of the lens, you can then use the chopper to separate the two pieces after pushing it down into the lens substance. Now you can see that we've got one large piece left, so we'll rotate that around. We'll get good purchase on it to stabilize it, and then again, we'll do a bit of a diagonal chopping motion and you can see how effectively this is able to disassemble this dense lens. One last piece here, we'll get good purchase on it, probably 400 millimeters of mercury in the vacuum, and then we will use the chopper again to split it. So now we have about five or six pieces, and then we can go ahead and start bringing these pieces up once they are into small pieces. Now if the chopping fails, there are three things you can do. You can try the vertical chop a second time, just pushing the chopper in and trying to separate the two pieces, and this often works. You can switch to a horizontal chopper, chopping in the same direction as the initial failed vertical chop, or if both those fail, switch to your usual divide and conquer down the same trough. In this case, the lens is all set up. We'll introduce the vertical chopper into the eye. We'll get our vacuum, but you'll see that on the first chop, nothing happens. And so we try it one more time. So we pull here, doesn't really split. Then we go one more time to try it, and then sure enough, you're able to split. And then you can continue chopping as you previously would. Again, by kind of spearing the lens, pulling them apart. Don't need vacuum on this softer lens. And we'll just keep going around as usual, uh, splitting the lens into about four or five or six pieces, depending on how dense it is, before removing any of the pieces to keep it nice and stabilized. And we'll do one last chop here, spearing the lens, pulling them apart, and then we are now down to five pieces, easy to remove these at this point. Now in our last case here, We'll show a failed vertical chop. So again, we're gonna push the chopper down and try and split. And you'll see that I'll make several attempts here. And I'm actually able to crack the lens anteriorly into two pieces, but it doesn't crack all the way to the posterior capsule. And so at this point, I'll abandon the chopping. I will switch out the vertical chopper for a dotic horizontal chopper. And then down the same direction as the initial failed chop, I'll go ahead and hook the nucleus. And you already have a partial chop, so it's gonna be easy. And then sure enough, you can see how easily the lens then splits into two. And then I will finish this case by chopping the rest of the nucleus with the horizontal chopping technique. So this shows you can do other ways uh, if the chop fails initially. So remember, just one step at a time, clear out the epinucleus, make a tunnel into the endonucleus, place the chopper into the eye, then place the phaco tip into the tunnel and add vacuum. Chop slowly but surely, pushing the vertical chopper into the endonucleus then do slight movement towards the FACO tip, and then separate. I hope you learned some good points on vertical chopping, and I wish you good luck in your chopping. Go ahead and email me if you have any questions at the address seen on the screen here.